Ready to set up your Z probe or even build a Z probe for your 3018 Pro? Then stick around because that's what we're doing in this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Now in today's episode we're talking about setting up your Z Pro. Now I was going to do one video for both the 4030 and the 3018 Pro but there are some differences between them so I've kept them separate. This is the video for the 3018 Pro. If you're after the one for the Prover XL 4030, check the link in the top corner. So you can either purchase a Z probe, one may come with your machine as it does with the Prover XL, or you can build one from a few simple components because they are relatively easy devices to assemble. Now, the purpose of them is to find the surface of your material or even the surface of your bed, depending on how you're working. And we're talking to quite precise measurements here, a tenth of a millimeter, even a hundredth of a millimeter. It's really up to you how accurate you want to make them. But before we start setting the Z probe up, let's take a quick look at how they actually work so you can understand more about them. So the setup for this is relatively simple. The other end of the cable is connected to your control board and what it's trying to do is create a circuit between these two points. And once it knows that circuit has happened, it will then do a quick calculation. So the way it works is it will lower the spindle down very slowly and it will touch at the top of that plate. At this point, it will remember the coordinates of the exact position that this is in. It will then add on the thickness of your plate. For ease, let's say that's 20 mil. It will then know that that coordinate that it remembered plus 20 mil will equal the exact surface of your material once it's been removed out of the way. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because the thickness of that is usually the most important part of getting this accurate. The more accurate you can be with measuring the thickness of that, the better results you will have in ensuring your bit sits exactly on the top of your material. Now I mentioned earlier about building your own Z probe. Now there is a very valid reason for this. The ones that you buy work just fine, but the problem is the base on them is about 20 mil thick. What this means in reality is if you take into consideration the Z travel on your 3018 Pro, it's only about 40 mil. When you do the quick math, what that basically means is you can't cut anything thicker than 20 mil using this Z Pro because of how deep it is. So there's a really good reason to actually build your own Z Pro. Now, the other reason is they're extremely cheap to make. This is one that I made when I first started uh, building this machine and it's worked extremely well. I'll show you how I did it. I really wasn't exaggerating when I said this can be done extremely cheaply. This entire setup should cost no more than about one to two pound or a couple of dollars. We basically have a few scrap pieces of cable, anything like old speaker wire will be suitable, a corner bracket and two crocodile clips. In fact, you could just get away with using the one crocodile clip and soldering this wire onto the bracket itself. Obviously all available in a local hardware store. The only thing to note with the bracket itself is it should have a flat and consistent thickness all the way across. So no matter where the, pro the uh, bit actually hits, it takes the same measurement. Also something with a little bit of weight in it just to hold it down while it's doing the Z probe action. Now at the other end of the cable you'll see that this is just currently being held in with electrical tape and this has done me fine since I've been using it. However the correct type of connection you should have on, on there is called a DuPont connector. They look something like this. And basically what happens is you have a little metal terminal that goes on the end of the cable this slides into the plastic sleeve which goes over the pins on the control board itself. Now the reason I just use electrical tape at the time when I did this is because to buy these connectors they come in sets of a couple of hundred. So it's something like this. Now you get lots of pieces and lots of connectors but the problem is if you only need one you've got to pay for the whole set and they're about seven or eight pounds so it just takes the price of the Z probe up a little bit. But no matter which method you use to hold it down just make sure that it is secure and none of the cables are touching when it goes to the control board. So what we're going to do now is get everything wired up, connect it correctly, then move over to the PC and input all the settings that are required. Now there are two popular pieces of software for running these machines. One is called Candle, the other is called UGS or Universal G-Code Sender. Now personally I prefer UGS but I know a lot of you out there also use Candle. So what we're going to do is run through the setup for both pieces of software separately. We're going to start with Candle then we'll move on to UGS. At the point that we move over to the computer I'll put a little timestamp on screen just to show where the UGS section starts. But for now let's move on and get everything connected up correctly. 
What you'll want to do now is use a set of calipers to measure the depth of the base itself. What's really important is that the metal plate must be sticking up higher than the plastic base, otherwise you'll get a false reading. If it's not sticking up higher, make sure that you push it through from the underneath and then perhaps put a dab of glue in just to hold it in place. So we'll take the measurement. 20.86 eight seven millimeters we'll make a note of that reading as that's the what we'll need to input to the software shortly so don't worry if you don't have a set of calipers we've got a bit of a cheat method to try and get the measurement that we're after what you want to do is lower down your z-axis and slacken off the collet so that the bit can be moved up and down pull the bit all the way down until it touches the bed then just tighten the collet up a little bit you can just do it with your fingers it doesn't need to be tightened with the spanners now we measure this with a ruler and we know it's roughly just over 20 millimeters so what we're going to do is come over to UGS and what we'll click is reset zero and what we'll see down the bottom is that's just gone to zero what this now means is every time that we raise the z-axis up it will give us a measurement so we'll start by raising it up 20 millimeters If we try sliding the plate underneath, it should just about catch. So we know we're not quite there yet. But what we'll do now is raise it up by one tenth of a millimeter each time. So 0.1 millimeters. So we raise it up a little bit. Try going under, and now it's catching on the metal. So we'll keep taking it up bit by bit until we can slide it underneath. Not quite there yet, a little bit more. There we are, that's just about scraping underneath now. Probably a fraction too tight, but as you can see on screen, 20.70 millimeters. Now the measurement that we got off the calipers was 20.86. So the reality is they're not that far off each other. Control boards may have different locations for the Z probe to be connected. Some control boards even have a specific port already marked up for it. In the instance here, we have the Kronos Maker and we have this long row of pins. The one we're after is the A5 pin, which is just located here. Now, being very clear about this, it needs to be the A5, as a lot of people get this confused with the 5V port. So we're going to connect this now to the A5. Just simply place that over and push it onto the pins. Clamp down a scrap piece of wood onto your bed and the bit that we're going to be using today is a 3.175mm flat end mill or a 1 8 flat end mill. You can use other bits but the test code that I've designed, this is the bit that it was designed for. Then place the plate underneath the bit, try and keep it into the centre and clip the alligator clip onto the bit. Now you'll want to leave a bit of a gap between the plate and the bit itself, a couple of millimetres but certainly no more than about 10 millimetres. So now we move over to the PC and as mentioned earlier if you're just interested in the UGS section then skip forward to the timestamp on screen now because we're going to start with Candle. So we get Candle opened up and straight away we can see it's connected because it's found out what GRBL version we are actually using. Now what we want to do to begin with is come up to the service and settings menu. And in here we can see that we have a probe commands line. What we're going to do is insert a, basically a string command just to tell the Z probe what to actually do. I've got this preloaded in a notepad file and as always I'll provide this in the description area. So we're going to copy this first line which is the code for the probe command. Control C, come back to candle and paste it into this top box, Control V. Now straight away you should be able to see that there are a few question marks. This is where we input the measurement that we took earlier from our actual base plate. So we're going to delete that and type in 20.86. And not that you really need to know, but I'll quickly run through what this is going to do. It's going to lower the z-axis by no more than 20 mil until it finds the connection at a feed rate of 100 millimeters per minute. Once it makes that connection, it will do the deduction of the uh, measurement that we've just put in to work out where the top of our material is. Then finally, it'll simply raise the z-axis back up by 5mm to give us a clearance rate so we can remove the z-probe. Now while we're in here, what we're going to do is just add in a custom button. If you're using Candle 1.2b, you don't need to do this, but if you're using 1.17, which is typically the one that is provided with all machines, then you do need to do this just to be safe. It's basically a test that we do after running the z-probe just to make sure the tool touches the top of our material. So we're going to 
come down to this user commands line where we can create custom buttons and what we're going to do again is just put another string command in so we we'll come back to the notepad and copy this and all it's simply telling the axis to do is to go to x0 y0 and then z0 finally we'll copy and paste that come back in and paste it over this g0 in the button 1 now the final thing we need to do here is just make sure we can see these command buttons that we're creating so we'll scroll down a little bit further and as you can see we need to turn on the panel for the user commands we'll click OK as you can see we've just had a few new buttons appear which is and number one is the custom command that we have just created so what we're going to do now is basically just lock in the X and the Y axis so we know this is the coordinate it wants to start from for those axes so we'll click that and then we'll run the Z probe command that we've just created which is this magnifying glass with the down arrow and as I say it should lower the Z probe down touch the plate and then retract it by 5 mil so we'll quickly run that now And that's basically just told our machine where the top of our material is. So we'll re remove the Z probe out of place. And just as proof, what we'll do is jog it out to the left by 10 mil, jog it back by 10 mil. And then if we click that custom button that we just created where it sends everything back to zero, it should go back to the X and Y axis where it originally was and then lower the Z axis all the way down until it touches the exact top of the material. perfect now what we're going to do as well is just run one quick test so we know that the depth that it's actually measuring is quite accurate we'll come up to file and we'll go open and I've preloaded a 40 mil wide 1 mil deep pocket cut again test files will all be provided in the description area so we'll click open and then we'll just quickly run this file And what you should have is a pocket that is exactly one mil deep. Now a few things to look out for. If when you ran the Z probe command and it didn't quite touch the material or it went a bit too heavy and put more pressure on the Z axis than you wanted, you just need to adjust the measurement accordingly depending on whether you want your axis to come a little bit higher or go a little bit lower. So now we're going to do the same in UGS. If you were just interested in the candle setup, then skip ahead to the time on screen now where we just talked through the last few tips and the final comments. So let's get UGS open. And we'll just get the machine connected. As we can see, everything's connected because all the jog controls have come to life. And the first thing you want to do is make sure your probe module menu is open. So we'll go up to window, come down to plugins and open the probe module. Now what you want to do is go to the settings menu on the left hand side. We're going to leave millimeters as it is, G54 as it is. Now there is a slight difference between UGS and Candle. UGS basically does a double Z probe. What that actually means is it lowers it down fast to hit the plate to begin with and then it retracts it slightly and lowers it down at a much slower rate to touch the plate again to basically give it a much more accurate measurement and that's what these settings are about here. So we're going to leave the end mill diameter as it is at 10 but we're going to put the fast find rate at 100 millimeters so it will lower it down at 100 millimeters per minute. The slow measure rate we're going to have at 10 millimeters so it just come down at a much slower rate for the final pass. And we're going to make the retract amount 1mm. Now you can take this up more if you want, but the higher this number is, the slower the whole probe process will take. Next we're going to come over to the Z menu on the left hand side. And we're going to adjust the touch plate thickness. Now this is the same measurement that we had from earlier, so this is 20.86mm. And the probe distance is basically the maximum amount we want it to travel until it finds the Z plate. It basically just stops there being an issue if there's nothing in the way and stops it from jamming the machine all the way into the bed. So we're going to make this a little bit higher at minus 20. And that means it will travel no more than 20mm to find the base plate. Now that's basically all the settings for UGS that we need to change. So we'll do the same as we did earlier in Candle. We'll reset the zero so we know it wants to start from these coordinates. And then we will initiate the probe. As I say, it should lower it down quite quickly, touch the plate, retract a little bit, and then just lower it down much slower to find the final measurement. And now we can remove the Z probe out of the way. 
And what we should be able to do now is click return to zero and this should lower the Z axis all the way down until it touches the top of the material perfectly. Perfect. And we will do the same again and just load in a quick test file. Just the 40 mil wide one deep pocket and run this same process again just to make sure that we get a one mil pocket. And that's your Z Pro set up in UGS with a quick test cut done just to make sure it's sitting on top of the material and the measurements are correct. So it really is that easy to set your Z probe up. It doesn't matter if it's UGS, Candle or any other software. You just need to know the settings to input or the string of code to get it all running. Now there are two common problems when people are setting up the Z probe. Either the tip doesn't quite touch the material or it goes too far and puts pressure on the material. The answer is quite simple. Just adjust your measurement until you get the correct level that you're after. If it's not quite touching the material, Increase your measurement slowly until it does and just keep running the Z probe function. Vice versa, if it's placing too much pressure on the material and marking it, bring that measurement down until it's just touching the top of your material perfect. Now, I do use a Z probe on every single job that I do, but it really comes into play when you're doing a job where you have to change the bits over, such as doing a roughing cut and then a detail cut. It just guarantees that you get that perfect height every time, makes our end products look better and makes our life even easier to use these machines. Now, I really hope you found today's episode useful. As always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and leave any comments and questions below. I always do my best to answer everyone and chat to everyone. If you want to support the channel, please follow the Patreon and PayPal links below. But that is everything for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.